Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the series on MongoDB. First and foremost, Happy New Year and as a New Year gift, I would like to present you with this brand new series on our YouTube channel, MongoDB. Now I can understand your situation the moment you heard the word MongoDB, you directly want to install it and want to write some code and build something with that. I can understand that's all right. But before we get into the phase where we write some code, there are a lot of myths about MongoDB that we need to clear up. Of course, there are a lot of terminologies and there are some other frameworks as well that we will be using in the MongoDB course. So we're going to need to talk about all of them. Uh, just to give a few names of that like MongoDB, Mongoose, uh, Maka, these are going to be some things that we are going to be talking about. Don't worry if you don't know about anything because you don't need to know. It is a fresh new course, there are no prerequisites and we're gonna get started with that. So let's begin the course officially here. First and foremost, MongoDB. I know it's a database, you also know about it. And uh, here is my quick request with all of you. Some of you might be coming up from the background of MySQL database or MySQL. Please keep all the knowledge of MySQL aside and try to start everything from scratch here. I don't want you to bring anything and kind of indulge with here. I want you to come with open slate, empty slates and just listen what I'm saying about MongoDB here. First myth about the MongoDB is MongoDB is just a database. No, it's not. MongoDB is also a company. The parent company is also known as with MongoDB. So there are a lot of things under the umbrella of MongoDB. The one we are talking about here is the database version of it. But in the upcoming videos, I'll introduce what are the other things that are being offered by MongoDB. So with that, Let's get started. So what is MongoDB? It's simply a database. It's not a relational database. It's NoSQL database. By the term NoSQL database, I don't mean to say that it's uh, not SQL. The NoSQL here simply means not only SQL database. It can perform a lot more than that. So it's simply a database uh, with a lot of things, a lot of pros and cons, just like everything in the world. So we're gonna be talking about MongoDB in this course entirely up here. So let's go ahead and talk about it. First and foremost, let's clear the point why you want to use MongoDB. I'm not saying this is the world's best database because everything in the world has their own pros and cons, but this is one, one can be a great choice. The first point here that I would like to put here is MongoDB stores data in flexible JSON-like document. Point your attention here. I'm saying JSON-like. I'm not saying exactly JSON. When we'll move into the series on the part where I will discuss about IDs and object IDs, it will get more clear up that why I'm saying JSON-like. But for right now, let's just keep it, it's a JSON database. The thing why, what makes everything so much easy with the JSON database is mapping of the object. Now, when you store anything into tables, rows and column, accessing that data can be a little bit challenging and can be a costly process for your processor or maybe your database unit. But in the NoSQL, since everything is stored in a mapping of key value pair, that's why it is much more easier, faster, and everything is so easy and simple with that. Now, a lot of people believe that this simplicity can introduce so many problems. That is also correct that since uh, there is so much flexibility given to you, if your test sets is not written properly, you can introduce some data sets that you don't want to. And it's not like it's a... Uh, con of the MongoDB, it's about how you're structuring your database and how restrictive you are in your test suite that we are also going to cover using Maka framework. So now at last, the last line here says MongoDB is a distributed database at its core, which is obviously correct. So high availability, horizontal scanning and geographic distributions are built in and easy to use. Simply means uh, the scalability is one kind of an issue with the MySQL database. It is amazing. Uh, it's awesome. We use it all the day long. But when it comes to scaling of that database, it can be challenging. These kinds of scaling is super easy in MongoDB and one of the reasons why so many new startups and it's getting high in demand here. Just to put an example, if you want to build an application which is using geospatial data, for example, a Tinder-like application where you want to see, hey, this is my geographic location and who are the other people near me in the location, doing that kind of thing with MySQL database is definitely one of the toughest thing. Surely doable, but one of the most trivial thing and toughest thing. That kind of thing, when we do in the MongoDB, it's amazingly simple. 
And also, since adding up the field and all these, changing the schema is so much easier in MongoDB, that's why it's one of the most preference thing. For example, you want to open up a simple e-commerce website, you have a set field, but later on you realize that this field or this laptop section should have one more section, like probably a spec section or maybe a processor section. That kind of thing requires a complete schema redesign in the MySQL. And hence comes the solution as MongoDB. Again, we are not putting up a debate here that which is best. It is MongoDB here for our series. Now, coming on to one more point, which is who is using MongoDB? And to be honest, the list is so big that I cannot even cover few of them. These are few that I have given in front of you. The reason of this screenshot here is just one guy on the very right hand side at the bottom, Royal Bank of Scotland. I have heard this so many times that MySQL is much more reliable than MongoDB, which is not at all perfectly correct. Surely both databases are reliable. That's why they are so much in the market. But a lot of people say that if you want to design something like uh, banks or any kind of databases related to totally bank, then you should always choose MySQL. That can be a correct statement, but see here, the Royal Bank of Scotland is using MongoDB. That means if you write your test suites properly, if you write your code properly, you definitely can use it even in the banking systems as well. So let's clear up another myth of the MongoDB that it cannot be used into the bank sector. It is totally a myth. Uh, with the proper usage, proper code, it can be used almost anywhere. And since the websites like eBay is using it, then that's the proof that it can be used for commercial purpose everywhere here. Now, one more big question that lies up. Hey, does MongoDB support my favorite programming language? And your favorite programming language can be PHP, C Sharp, uh, maybe JavaScript. If you all know, Mongo is pretty much favorite for JavaScript guys, whether that's a mean stack or mern stack. So here comes the stuff that these are the drivers which are available. We're gonna talk about these drivers a little bit later in the series, but definitely once I click up onto this link, let's see what are the website, what are the languages which are available. So we can see it supports a couple of good famous programming languages, C, C++, C Sharp, Go, JavaScript, Node.js, Perl, PHP, Python, Motor, uh, again, Python, I think, uh, Ruby, uh, Mongoid in the Ruby as well, and Scala. So these are the like market trendy languages. All of them are being supported and more support is coming almost every single day they are working on it. The structure that we are gonna be using is first and foremost is going to be language independent. We are gonna learn it like we don't care about language at all. We just care about database here. But later on, we're gonna move into Node and Maka. So I already have a free JavaScript course on the YouTube as well as on my website, learncodeonline.in, so you might want to check that out. So uh, this is it, this is it, the starting of what is MongoDB. In the future video also, I'll cover up some of the theoretical part of MongoDB first, then we'll move on to installation, and then we're gonna start making up our own database, learning all the amazing stuff that MongoDB has to offer. Later on in the series, we are also going to touch up upon the Maka framework, which I believe if you're learning MongoDB, it's a must have framework for testing. So all those tester guys, here comes the testing series uh, using Maka. We definitely can use other frameworks which are pretty popular, but I think Maka is the most easiest one to use and I use it quite a lot. So that's why it was the easiest choice, okay? So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that we can keep on continuing building such series with your awesome support. And Happy New Year and catch you up in the next video.